weekend recap. Hello everyone. My name is Adrian and welcome to Ravona TV. Before we begin, plenty of you will be asking for a video on Juve and their 15 point reduction. We gotta wait. The full report comes out in February, I believe, so a video right now would be doing a lot of guesswork, which we don't want to do in this situation, you know? So we'll all be patient and wait, but yes, you know what the weekend recap is. If you don't, then it's a quick run through of the top four leagues in Europe, everything that happened, well, close to it at least, the scores and standings, the trends in the different leagues. Let's get started in Deutschland. The Bundesliga has returned, finally. I really, really had been missing the Bundesliga lately, so I was relieved to have them return on Friday. And what a matchup we had. RB Leipzig hosting Bayern Munich, and Marco Rosa's side looked quite decent. Manuel Neuer injured himself for Bayern during the break. He was on a ski tour and had to get surgery on his fractured leg. So Bayern went ahead and bought their nemesis, Jan Sommer, and he went straight in as the starter. And why wouldn't he, right? One of the better shot stoppers in the world, especially when he's played against Bayern in the past. It was a fairly even match between the two, picking up from where he left off. Chupa Moting got the goal for Bayern, his seventh in the Bundesliga from just 11 appearances, you'll remember. Halstenberg bundled in as equalizer in the 51st minute for Leipzig. Not the prettiest of goals, but they all count the same, right? 1-1 the final between Leipzig and Bayern. After leading the league early on, Union Berlin went on an unfortunate three-match winless streak to close out the first portion of the season. Making their return on Saturday, they hosted Hoffenheim, another team that was hot and cold in the first part of the season. And we were treated to a classic Union Berlin late show at the Alten Forest Rai. With Jordan Pifok hitting the woodwork with his penalty, Hoffenheim took the lead in the first half through Ilyas Bebu. That no doubt would have felt like a, oh no, here we go again. We're going to struggle like we did back in November, kind of feeling for Union. But Doki equalized in the 73rd, only to put Union ahead in the 89th. And then the stadium turned into a fur. Late in stoppage time in the 96th, Leveling was played through by Ostunali. Sounds like the Turkish version of Tonali. And slotted past the keeper to cement it. 3-1 Union, back to winning ways and long may it continue. They just signed Josip Juranovic as well. So that could be a nice signing for them. There were a couple of eyebrow-raising results, the first of which being Nico Kovac's VFL Wolfsburg hosting SC Freiburg, a typically very, very strong SC Freiburg, but they were absolutely horrendous on the day, man. That back line looked like they all went skiing with Manuel Neuer, as they were porous as hell. 6-0 was the score, 6. It was 3-0 at halftime, 3 more in the second half, the substitute Luca Waldschmidt getting a 94th minute penalty just because, you know, 5-0 down, why not? Have a penalty as well. A team went one better than six, as FC Köln absolutely destroyed full Krug FC, Werder Bremen. By the time the 36th minute had come around, Köln were 5-0 up, scoring every six and a half minutes on average. Full Krug did pull one back, 5-1 at the half, only for Skiri to make it six in the 54th. And to further the pain, Marco Friedel grabbed an own goal. Hell yeah, 7-1 Köln. Madness. Eintracht Frankfurt had a fantastic start as they look to push Bayern Munich further in the second half of the season. They kicked things off with a 3-0 win over FC Schalke, the undisputed worst team in the league, baby. And to actually borrow a term from Schalke themselves, they have indeed become the basement boys. I feel for Schalke fans, but I mean, that tweet from back in the day was awesome. Kolomoani continues his fine form as he set up the first goal for Frankfurt as the highly sought after Jesper Lindstrom opened the scoring and then they added a few late as Schalke tried to push for an equalizer. Rafael Bore with a goal and an assist. Frankfurt looking nice still under Glasner. Germany actually hogged all of the goals this weekend as on Sunday alone between two matches there were 12 goals scored. Let's start with Borussia Dortmund hosting Augsburg, and the hosts opened the scoring in the 29th minute with a well-worked attack down the right side, with Jude Bellingham lashing it past the keeper from the edge of the box. Lovely, lovely, lovely stuff from Bellingham. But about 10 minutes later, Augsburg capitalized on a Dortmund mistake at the back. Nice finish from Arnie Meyer from a tough angle, but... Just two minutes later, a great free kick from Brandt was nodded in by Schlotterbeck past a, a sleeping keeper to restore the lead for a few minutes at least. But look at this, man. First of all, why are you just standing there with the entirety of the goal open and why aren't you looking at the ball? 
In first half stoppage time, another mistake at the back as Borussia Dortmund's defense making mistakes is basically club policy at this point. Hummels caught out this time, Demirovic able to dink the ball over Kobel, and Ryerson was unable to clear it properly. So 2-2 at the half. Now, during my stream, people were talking about how good Gittens was when he came on, and my god, was he ever good. You guys were right. So technically sound, a nightmare for Augsburg's right flank as Reyna made mischief himself. But five minutes after coming on, Gittens cut inside and bounced a curling strike in off the far post to make it 3-2. And while David Colina equalized once again, Gio Reyna hit a stunning volley that looped into the far post. 4-3 Borussia Dortmund the final. Glad I went back and watched this one. <laughs> also, really glad to see Sebastian Haller back on the pitch. Hopefully he starts banging them in soon for Dortmund. And the other match on the day was between Bayer Leverkusen and Borussia Mönchengladbach, who recently lost the aforementioned Sommer to Bayern. Usually it's Dortmund who steals from Gladbach. That's usually their MO. Hmm. Bayern getting in on it now. Usually Dortmund takes from Gladbach and Bayern takes from Dortmund. And Leipzig, of course. Anyway, Gladbach fought back valiantly in this one, but having gone 3-0 behind at home, they could only muster two in their 3-2 loss. Now, what do all these results mean in the standings? Bayern have a five-point lead over Frankfurt, Union, and Freiburg, while RB Leipzig and Dortmund round out the top six, six and seven points behind Bayern, respectively. Welcome back, Bundesliga. We missed you. Alert! Hellas Verona have won a match. Speaking of basement boys, these dudes have looked clueless this season without Igor Tudor at the helm. But they managed to end the mini hot streak, the mini kill streak from Lecce as Hellas Verona beat them 2-0 at the Stadio Marcantonio Bentegodi. De Paoli and Lazatic were the goals for Hellas Verona, which means they are still in the relegation zone, but now just, well, six points behind safety, behind Salernitana. And speaking of Salernitana, they hosted Napoli. Who else but Victor Osimhen getting in on the goals with his 13th and 15 appearances, 14 of which have been starts by the way so he has a great elite strike rate he nearly opened the scoring in the 33rd but his ass was offside at least that's what i thought from the first glance but it turns out they drew the line from his shoulder not his ass my mistake his ass was offside but it wasn't his ass that was offside you know what i mean nice finish for that offside goal though anyway speaking of nice asses i mean finishes de lorenzo El Capitano on the day smashed one off the post and in to finally beat Ochoa with a legal goal. And in the second half, Elmas hit the post and Osimhen tucked away the rebound. 2-0 Napoli, another win for them after that loss to Cremonese in the cup. Anyway, Fiorentina's win over Sassuolo recently turned out to be a false sunrise for them as they got right back into their losing ways. Back into their poor form with a loss against Torino this weekend, Italiano's side are struggling, and a first half Alexei Merenchuk goal was enough to seal it. Hey, uh, Editor Adrian here. Um, Editor Adrian catching strays, you know, the tie between recording the episode and now recording this the next morning, caught something, voice is weird. Anyway, over in Italy, AS Roma play against Spezia. Paolo Dybala continues to be very, very good for AS Roma, doesn't he? He got two assists in this match. Tammy Abraham with a nice goal. Good pass from Dybala, but Abraham still had a lot to do to beat his man and then finish that one off against Spezia. So they get a 2-0 win there. And then, of course, there's Juventus, the team that recently found out that they could potentially have a 15-point reduction. It's a tentative one now as they're going to contest that. But Juventus up against Atalanta, a team that's very much on fire, a team that has... Adam Ola Lookman is looking very, very good. He scored two goals in this one, including a bit of a fortunate goal. That first one, Chesney not doing well there, was he? Chesney was not doing well in that first one. Angel Di Maria with the penalty. Arcadius Milik, he gets a nice little finish. Danilo got the final goal. It ends up 3-3. And Juve, as you can see in the standings here, down to ninth now without 15 points taken away. Napoli still lead. They're at 50 points already. We have another alert! Atletico Madrid's attack found its form finally at home against Real Valladolid. You love to see it. Antoine Griezmann at the heart of all things good as his great form continues this season. He assisted Morata for the first goal with a lovely backheeled flick. Great composure from Morata as well as he stepped inside before rolling it in at the near post. Like I said, I love a near post finish. Griezmann then had a nice little flick once again, but this one went straight in. Great finish at the near post following the squared ball from Molina. And finally, they wrapped up the game in the 28th minute as Mario Hermoso had his initial header saved. 
from a Griezmann free kick, by the way. But he put away the rebound. 3-0 at Letty. That's more like it. Depay also made his debut coming on later. Interested to see how he fits in at Atleti. It could be very, very good for their attack. Sevilla have surprisingly found themselves in a relegation battle this season. And in fact, this weekend, they had a relegation battle against Cadiz, whom were ahead of them coming into this match. This Southern Spain battle was settled with an 89th minute winner from Ivan Rakitic, who converted from the penalty spot. Well won by Suso after his strike was handled by Ivan Elejo. Massive, massive three points for Sevilla to take them out of the relegation zone for now. Sampaoli will be watching their next match against Elche from the stands, however, as he unsurprisingly was sent off. You know, a pressure cooker situation for him as a manager, and he himself is a pressure cooker. So he's gone. Real Sociedad went away to Real Vallecano and they continue to pile the pressure on Real Madrid. Alexander Sorloth has finally found somewhere to settle and he's thriving at Sociedad at the moment. He linked up with David Silva who played a lovely reverse through ball and the Norwegian poked it between the legs of an onrushing Dmitrievsky. Sorloth has scored six in his last eight appearances for Sociedad while his strike partner doubled their lead in their 2-0 win away to Rio. Where Sevilla had a late winner from the penalty spot, Villarreal said to themselves, let's do one better, man. Playing against Girona on Sunday, a 101st minute penalty from Dani Parejo sealed a 1-0 win for Setien's fellas as they bounced back after that loss to Real Madrid in the Copa del Rey. Their La Liga form, five matches unbeaten now as they have climbed a lot. Speaking of climbing a lot, a big shout out to Mallorca, who beat Celta this weekend to jump up the table on 25 points now. Celta, on the other hand, are in a bit of trouble, aren't they? Level on points with Valladolid, who are in the relegation zone. So let's see if that guy, Aspas, can save them. Barcelona got a 1-0 win over Hetafe, and it was fairly touch and go for them at times. Hetafe can be proud of their performance, especially in that second half, as they had a few opportunities to equalize, but they were all high, wide, or right at Ter Stegen. Pedri scored what was the eventual winner in the 35th minute, a stunning counter from Barca, if you want to call it a counter. Hetafe trying to pass their way out of their own end, intercepted one touch pass from Christensen, played Rafinha through, and he hit a first time ball into the middle for Pedri to touch past the keeper. One nil Barca, your move Real Madrid. Editor Adrian has that covered. Real Madrid versus Athletic, uh, I, you know, after a bit of a dip in form, it feels like Real Madrid are starting to bounce back. That match against Villarreal where they came back in the Copa del Rey, maybe that was a turning point for them. Up against Athletic Club, away to Athletic Club. Benzema got the first goal in the 24th minute and then laid on Toni Kroos with a nice little goal to finish things off. A touch of class from the German. Nice strike, low past the keeper. They get that win there, 2-0 away, meaning they stay within three points of Barcelona, while Real Sociedad is three points behind them. But, of course, Real and Barcelona do have matches in hand, as do Betis and the team's that we're at the Super Cup, as well as some other teams like Almeria. And Valencia has two matches in hand. Isn't that something? Liverpool versus Chelsea, nil-nil, wasn't the greatest of matches as it really looked like ninth versus 10th, you know? Which is exactly what it was. Both sides in poor form, both sides with tons of injuries. I mean, one of the best stretches of the match was when Mudrik came on, as he was electric. Could have had a goal, maybe two, but he fluffed his lines a bit. But that said, he's as fast and skillful as they come, just lacking that end product so far. But let's be real, he played for 35 minutes. He'll find his feet. And by the way, be sure to check out my deep dive on him to see what his early life was like, if he's always been an insane worker, who inspires his work ethic, how he's best deployed, and his playing style, and so much more. Definitely worth checking out, especially if that cameo against Liverpool got you interested into him as a player and his past. Leicester versus Brighton, 2-2, but hey, there were some very fun moments in this one. Mitoma is continuing to look like an incredible signing for Brighton this season. He scored a lovely goal to get things started in this game. Are Aston Villa starting to find themselves again under Emery? I mean, I say that after we're just a couple of weeks on from them losing to fourth tier Stevenage in the FA Cup at home, no less. But anyways, after beating Leeds United last weekend, they beat Southampton away with Ollie Watkins getting what was the winner. He's struggled this season, just his fourth goal in 19 appearances. West Ham United versus Everton, a relegation battle of the ages, and it was Everton who played with far more relegation legitimacy than West Ham. I mean, what were West Ham thinking? Scoring two goals in seven minutes to take the lead over Everton? Don't they want to go down? No? 
Okay, never mind then, just Everton. But in all seriousness, West Ham needed that badly as Bowen scored twice in the first half for the victory after he was unstoppable last season. Those were just his third and fourth goals in this campaign. They need him to catch fire again. 2-0 West Ham, massive three points for them. Palace and Newcastle, nil-nil. Leeds United, Brentford, nil-nil. Man, so many draws in England this weekend. Arsenal versus Manchester United. Now that was a blast. I did a live watch along for it as I want to do more streams of league play and not just limit it to Champions League games. So watch out for those. I'll try and uh, announce those further ahead of time. Arsenal with the 3-2 win and they were great value for it, weren't they? Of course, United struck first from out of nowhere as Marcus Rashford blew through Thomas Partey before arrowing a strike low past Ramsdale, but Arsenal equalized just seven minutes later as Nketiah was lurking at the back post to head in Xhaka's cross. Arsenal were absolutely dominant in this match for most of it, I would say, though United had their moments as the first half wound down. However, in the second half, it was all Arsenal with Bukayo Saka scoring a lovely strike from distance tucked just inside that bottom corner past De Gea. Lissandro Martinez would capitalize on a Ramsdale mistake to make it 2-2. I thought Ramsdale should have just punched that ball clear and be sure of it as his area was congested. Needed Sudafed in there, but late on, a well-worked goal was eventually finished off by Enketia once again. Brilliant touch by him to guide it past De Gea. For United, it was clear that they weren't quite up to snuff. Antony struggled to do anything. Eriksen looked slow and out of pace. I thought that Shaw and Veghorst were pretty great for United. Wambasaka made a couple of great tackles as well. Veghorst, while he didn't get any chances, I thought he was great in his defensive output and his passing and hold-up play. As for Arsenal, I mean, they're flying, aren't they? Zinchenko was all over the pitch, on the flank, in the middle of the park. Hell, he was even on the right flank at one point. He has a winning attitude that he brought from City, and you can see his importance to this team. Odegaard was dangerous, Xhaka was brilliant, as was Partey. Saka was a constant threat down the right. I mean, Arsenal were fantastic. They are fantastic, and they're great value for their lead at the top of the table. Earlier in the day, Man City continued their great reaction to going 2-0 down to Tottenham <laughs> as they stormed to a 3-0 victory over Wolves with Erling Haaland scoring all three goals for them. That takes him up to 25 in the Premier League, already beating the previous three Golden Boot winners who only made it to 23. And that was his fourth hat trick for City already, which is, that's just ridiculous. I think City are looking as though they are reacting well to Guardiola's words following the Spurs match. They look hungry again, and with two matches coming up against Arsenal, this will hopefully be an incredible title race. Arsenal have a match in hand over City as well as a 5 point lead. They are on track for over 100 points if this trajectory continues. Newcastle, the other team with just one loss this season, sit in third, level with Manchester United. Hey, thanks for coming by everyone. I appreciate you taking the time on your Monday to chill and talk football with me. And if you enjoyed this, then all I ask for is a like. That's it, it's free. Beyond that, I have some really fun videos planned for this week. So stick around and I'll see you then. Ciao.